Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. American History X movie thoughts on now some say that this movie is racist on account of the black gangs starting it you know they they shot the you know the father of the vineyard household and they tried to steal you know Derek's truck and the the truck he inherited after his father or was it a gift something like that and I guess I can see that perspective, but I disagree. These details just show that, yes, there is violence on both sides in lower class LA. That was the truth then, that is the truth now. But both sides also attack some who don't deserve it, you know, the and, and use something that's that the other side does as an excuse to attack you know, sometimes even murder someone who does not deserve it, you know, they, the, this, this drug, you know, gang, you know, killing the, the father of the vineyard household does not in any way, you know, excuse their attack on the, you know, that, that small store, you know, and, the yeah so so these and and you know him beating them at basketball which you know I've seen in online reviews you know saying oh that come on a you know white guys including infants to play beating black guys at basketball mm, maybe now the but but yeah you know him beating them at basketball and they think, you know, they, they show up with guns at his place and try to steal his truck. You know, it's it's disproportionate. Now, and, you know, you know, ultimately, Derek, and, and Derek finding them stealing his truck, murders them. You know, that, that first guy he shoots at the door, he has a gun. It's basically self-defense. And then he starts shooting, you know, the guy who's running, and he shoots at the guy driving off in the car. You know, at that point, it's no longer, yeah, that's that's when it gets into murder. And, you know, the curb stomp is just devastating. And, you know, it's, you know, and, and they actually do put this white guy in jail. I mean... Sure, it was murder, but he's not a cop. That's why he's not a cop. Now, you know, and, and then some have pointed out online that Nazis, new Nazis do watch this film, and it's already been pointed out. That's the same reason that, you know, mafia and gangsters kind of, you know, they watch movies like Goodfellas. It shows... You know, it's a movie that shows what their group does, you know, so even though it's saying that this is bad, it's still, yeah, you know, now. And the, the movie really shows that hatred destroys people from both sides. Now, it's been pointed out before. This one black guy in prison must hold a lot of sway that he can, you know, yeah, that no one attacks Derek after he breaks with the neo-Nazis, and yeah, just because the two of them are now friends, you know, I guess he really is the most dangerous man in the prison because of the whole underwear thing. Now... you know the 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 ending is just incredibly you know impactful you know it's 
if you keep provoking the violent, you know, violent people around you, you know, long enough, sooner or later, one of them will attack you, and, you know, in this case, it was a gang member who, you know, who was willing to shoot someone over smoke blown in his face. You know, the, the, the tiniest of infractions. And as, you know, I mentioned in the review, there's a lot of ego and machoism in this. You know, he, he won't stand for even that insult. And, you know, the, you know, the, the movie keeps building tension towards that, you know, first we just see the two of them face off, you know, the, the smoke blown and the bell rings and, you know, that's why he walks off, which is also a little, <laughs> a little funny, but he does also say that, you know, this guy, he wants to murder this other guy and he's like, well, I'm, I might be late for class, so I'm not going to do it, but he does also say he doesn't have his gun on him, so, yeah, you know, and through the rest of the film, we see him a couple of times and, you know, he's like, you know, aiming at him and, you know, imagining shooting him and, or was that one of the other gang members? Anyway, you know, the, the other gang members also kind of talk him up to that point. It's, you know, it's not just something that, you know, it happened once and then, not, yeah, you know, besides, this is not the first time that some, you know, some white kid has done something racist towards him. You know, this is the combination of all of, all of that. Now, and, you know, it's, you know, it's so tragic that, you know, he has barely been able to revert from his neo-Nazi life and his old life catches up to him. And we don't really see it, but there's no clear indication that Danny has actually been going out and like, you know, doing attacks the way we saw Derek do. You know, Derek was clearly involved in actual violence. It's not clear if Danny has and certainly he does not seem as far gone, you might say. And yeah, so so this is you know, even though he wasn't that far into that world, it still destroys him because that world is incredibly destructive. Now, and, you know, Derek sees the, the destruction he's caused and inspired by, you know, his old ways, you know, reach their natural conclusion violence hitting someone close to himself. You know, he, he never thought about that when he went in and started, you know, attacking other ethnicities and such. It never occurred to him that his own family might be hurt by it. And, yeah, it's, you know, very compelling. It's, it's that kind of, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword kind of thing. Now, I understand that the original ending had Derek, you know, in front of a mirror shaving his hair off, as in, you know, now he's going to go back to being a neo-Nazi because, again, you know, a black kid, you know, killed someone close to him, and that was kind of what pushed him there, as we saw in the very beginning of the film, you know, the first time, and, you know, Norton objected. I don't think that it would have I I like that it ends on a more ambiguous note. It's entirely possible that he will go back to his old ways after you know we we don't know for sure but you know he says what have I done and you know it it ends on that. I personally don't think that he would go back to being a neo Nazi but it's possible that he would, you know, I mean, we already saw him at the party use some violence against, you know, the neo-Nazi group he came from. This might make him even more violent towards them, and it would probably get him killed. 
now. When you know the the donut shop shop scene with, you know they they ask him to talk his old gang out of revenge attacks for Seth and Cameron, and you know trying to avoid an all-out gang war, and it's kind of you know it 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 hints at the attack on Danny which was also retaliation so you know we have this hint towards a neo-nazi or you know someone like that will be involved in some violence because of a you know an attack on you know an ethnicity and yeah that was this is quite nicely done and this is one of the times a movie shows that rape, you know, is used to humiliate and dominate someone, not for sexual pleasure. You know, there's no indication that, I believe it was Spike, let's go with that, Spike rapes him, and there's no indication at any other point in the movie that Spike is gay. There's no, you know, nor that he's attracted to Derek. It is clearly a way to show him his place to you know he he went out of line and he had better accept his you know his place he he can't go and play basket with you know the the black guys in jail that's you know he's he's a neo nazi and he's going to stay with them you know and he you know they they talk to him about how his his rhetoric isn't that you know they're they're getting kind of sick of it in there in jail and it's it's very much that he is he's faced with reality when he gets into the jail it's you know it's it's one thing to talk a bunch of you know white white trash guys into attacking a you know a, a store it's another thing entirely to actually be surrounded by gangs you know who are very ready to attack and you know attack one another and to be in a situation where yeah you know he can't he doesn't get to be in charge his rhetoric is not that impressive to them you know he he's used to pretty much being the leader and being the you know teacher's pet of the of the overall leader of Cameron's and yeah he's he's used to it being you know his his mouth and his fists and suddenly that doesn't really work and you know And yeah, he's very much, he is alone in jail. He is the only one in there who is, you know, he doesn't know anybody in there. He, he has an affiliation with the neo-Nazis, but, you know, yeah. And once he leaves them, it becomes very dangerous. And the reason that he and the neo-Nazis, you know, part ways is that he sees the hypocrisy which and it genuinely is hypocrisy because they talk about how they are you know they clearly think themselves superior but they they do dealings with you know like spike says it's just politics and again that is that is the real world you can't be completely you know you 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 have to work with other powerful entities. You cannot just expect to be able to take down the world by yourself with your own powerful group. Now, I suppose...
I personally like that the present day portion takes place essentially over 24 hours. You know, it starts with Danny at school and it ends with Danny start you know going into school for you know the the earliest classes so actually I guess that makes it slightly less than 24 hours and yeah I I think it's really effective in showing how much can happen with these couple of games in that short amount of time but I I realize that that does also make Danny's change of you know yeah he goes from neo-nazism to basically being yeah much more much more open and yeah that is a very short space of time because you know he spent the last three years changing towards this and then in 24 hours he changes changes back basically you know, yeah. Now, I think the the film does a great job of communicating that, you know, how Derek is abusive to his family. You know, I mean, at the end of the, you know, the the discussion, let's call it that. That's that's what, you know. Crap, I don't remember the, the character name, but Elliot Gould's character, if that's how you pronounce his name, you know, he says, we're, we're just having a discussion. The end of that discussion, you know, he literally, he, you know, he says, oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, you know, I've never hurt you, right? It's, you know, it's exactly the kind of thing an abusive, you know, in a lot of cases, it's a... A spouse or the like but in this case it is you know his his siblings and his mother but yeah you know after this you know I mean he he shoves Danny away which could have you know I mean Danny isn't terribly hurt there but he could have been and you know he's he's choking Davina and you know yeah and and scaring Elliot Gould out of the house and after all of that he's like oh I you know I've never hurt you he he just did and he you know oh I, I just I got upset it's it's okay now you know and it's because of that it's you know they feel they can't leave and you know in a way they almost kind of can't because it's not a spouse situation and he is the main yeah that's that's another big thing he's he's one of the people who really keeps them in the home as we see once he goes in jail they lose it they depend on him for money so they can't just leave and yeah you know he's really causing his family a lot of pain and I think the you know Beverly, you know, again, I forget the character name, but her, her yelling at him, you know, what have I done? What have I done to, you know, for you to do this? And aren't you, you know, he says, aren't you ashamed to be with it? And she says, I'm ashamed that you came out of my body. You know, there, you know, it's, it's one of those, you know, along with, the, the prison rape and the curb stomp, it's one of those things that really stick in your mind. Now... The, I like that the, you know, the party at Cameron's, you know, very... You know, it's very aggressive, there is no, like... Yeah, it's, it's just, it's pure rage, feeding on pure rage, you know, they're, they're, other than just, you know, drinking, which is, it's a party, they're, you know, you know, j jumping around, just, you know, you know, all this pent up rage, and they're, they're yelling, again, like I said in the root, not really singing, just yelling the lyrics, and, you know, it's this 
hard rock. I don't have a problem with hard rock. I there there's some hard rock that I really like. You know, drowning pool. Yeah, some corn. I don't have a problem with hard rock, but in this movie it's very clear, and I don't think the movie's really saying that all all hard rock is like this either, but the hard rock at the party is just pure rage. You know, there is no like yeah, there's there's no Yeah, it's it's just it's barely guided rage. And the and you know and and that is where Derek really full on has to confront his past which he's seen you know we see signs of it throughout that one day you know he Danny comes home and you know and Derek hears about this this essay and you know here's how Danny is talking about Sweeney and briefly on Sweeney, I also think that's a really great character. This kind of, you know, he has two doctorates. Why is he teaching high school? You know, asks Derek, you know, when, when talking with his, his father at the, you know, at the table. And, you know, mother's like, you know, they, I'm, I don't think they teach Tom Clancy in school. I, I disagree with the, the man, rest in peace, politically. His writing is pretty good. I don't, see, you know, I I feel like it's might be a good enough idea. You know, just have him read at least one book or portions of one book. He's, you know, his his the, this kind of you know international politics, and you know, he was he was very adept at that. There's you know, there's a reason his name is pretty well known. And anyway. Yeah, you know, Sweeney, you know, two doctorates, why is he teaching high school? Because he knows that that's where, you know, he says to Gould, I'm not ready to give up on this kit yet. And, you know, he, he does tear Danny a new one when he comes in, but he's still, you know, you have one more chance. You know, if you do this, if you prove yourself, you know, he knows that high school in this low class you know, community, that is where you, you know, change things. And, you know, he started out, starts out as a teacher. By by the time Danny's in high school, he's the principal. You know, yeah, he knows that, you know, get them young. If you can get them out of, you know, get them out of the hatred, maybe even get them completely out of the lower class community. And he, you know, he keeps pointing to, this kid is brilliant, you know. And... You know, and and the, the you know, I can assure you, his brother did not put him up to this. You know, but but yeah, the you know throughout the day, Derek is confronted with his past. You know, first Danny talking about Sweeney and the the essay, then you know, Seth shows up, and there's just his general behavior and his rhetoric, and then he has Danny spew rhetoric into the camera and you know yeah so, so gradually seeing these things and then at the party it's you know it's kind of the climax of all this tension and the the pressures of his old life that yeah and I think it's very noteworthy that after he leaves the party we don't see any neo-nazis we I one of the deleted scenes has Seth and Cameron together in a, a show. I guess it might be Ben's Burgers. They keep mentioning that. Yeah, you know the product placement. Maybe I don't know. I'm not sure if it's a specific brand or anything. Yeah, you know they they go in there and then they accost this. You know black guy who's with a white girl and you know and then after they leave you know you see a black gang that talk about you know those are the guys and that's you know that leads to them being beaten up and ending up in the ICU so that scene did take place you know after they left the the party but other than that, it's actually 
you know, if you if you can at least like borrow the DVD from someone or rent it or something, the the deleted scenes that are like three, they're not long, but they're there's some good stuff there. In in the scene, Seth is like, you know, talking about uh, you know, Seth is gonna be in charge of distributing videos from now on, you know, and he's like, Could I make a video? Because I have a really great idea. A musical comedy. And they just stare at each other and it's just it's you know, it's like you don't know whether whether to laugh or you know pick your jaw from before. It's just, it's so unreal that that just transpired. But, yeah, you know, afterwards he has basically left the neo-Nazis behind, and then you have the donut shop with, shop with, you have to come back to it, and he's like, you know, I just got out, you know, and, you know, him beating up Cameron a little bit, and, you know, um, you know, has a gun pointed at him by Seth, and you know gets the gun away and gets out of there. You know, yeah, it's it's kind of the the climax and showing, yeah. Now the but but yeah the the whole party. You know, that's also where he meets Stacy. And, you know, it's this thing of he changed, but she didn't. She, you know, her hatred only grew stronger. And he has, you know, yeah, he's completely left behind. And she, you know, he even suggests, you know, let's, let's get away from all of this. You know, we have to get out. And he also says, you know, I have to get you out of this place, you know. Because the you know there's too much violence, there's too much hatred between ethnicities, and you know and and that's he doesn't get Danny out quite quickly enough, and so Danny ends up dead, you know. And Derek helped increase tensions between the ethnicities. You know we're we're told that they're ten times as big as when Derek went into jail, and. You know, Derek really helped start. The, you know, they mentioned you know there was no DOC before Cameron and and Derek met and started working together. And yeah, he you know he asked her, and she's like, "What's what's wrong with you? What what happened?" And you know, he goes in and talks to to Cameron, who you know at first is like a discussion, and he's like, "You know, this is a waste of time. Just you know, go you know." deal with this and then come back when you're ready to talk, you know, and it's, you know, and, and then he threatens that he, you know, he's going to come after Danny and, you know, and then Derek loses control, you know, he, he does still have a temper and, you know, run, you know, checks if the coastal zone gets out and, you know, Seth goes in there to, to see what, you know, why did he just come out of the, where's Cameron, you know, and he comes back out, he just, you know, Cameron's knocked out, you know, something like that, and Stacy runs up, why don't you tell them what you just told me, and she's shouting and getting them all riled up, and again, clearly, you know, like, like I said in the review, clearly getting excited by this, you know, and she, before that, before that scene, the only times we saw her get excited by this, it was for Derek. Now it's against him. And that, again, that is so telling. It's not about him or them. It's about the hatred. The, she doesn't really care about him or them as a couple. It's It only worked for her when he hated them and when he, you know, directly went against them. You know, she came out there when he riled up all these, you know, these guys for attacking the, the store. You know, and yeah, she's she's absolutely terrifying. I think, you know, in, in Nostalgia Chick's review of The Craft, she says something like, I don't think Fyrus is acting here, 
I think she might legitimately be crazy. Could be. And I'm just really glad that she's, you know, getting in front of the camera to, to show us that because, you know, her, her roles are some of the most memorable of these really, you know, yeah, terrifying women. You know, she's she's great in the craft as well. It's been ages since I watched that movie, so I couldn't say if it's particularly good, but I distinctly remember her in it. Now, but but yeah, you know, and and the gun. You know, it's it's. I guess it's not quite Chekhov's gun. You know, it's only pointed at someone. It, it's never really fired, but. The first time you see Seth, very short, you know, you, you see that he's incredibly angry. You see he's a creepy, perverted, you know, filming, trying to film, you know, Davina's legs. They just, yeah, I, I quite like her, you know, her fighting back. You know, she usually verbally, but yeah, she's, she's, you know, she can, she can think up some pretty, you know, decisive arguments and, you know, things like that as well. You know, her speaking up and her insulting Seth and, yeah. But, but yeah, you know, we see all this about him and then we see that he's carrying a gun. He's carrying a gun to his buddy's place. What exactly does he think he's going to need a gun for? You know, and they're just, they're just going eating. They're not on their way to somewhere to attack. It's a celebration. Why does he think he needs a gun? You know, it's, and then they're at the end of the party. Again, why does he need a, a, a gun when he's surrounded by like-minded individuals? You know, and he gets out his gun. He aims at this guy that he knew for years and that, you know, they were some of the best of friends. And he's about to shoot him. You know, that's how, you know, yeah, for these people, it's about the hatred and, you know, very accurate portrayal. It's, you know, they are, they are consumed by the hatred. It's not about the people. And you have this, you know, and, and everyone freezes at that moment, you know, and, and, backs off from Seth and you know Seth turns around for you know turns his head or something and immediately you know the Derek grabs the gun and he's taking charge of the situation again you know Danny come on and you know and I love that you know this is I don't know exactly who wrote it like this and it's probably like a major lib and I get, you know, I'm not saying guns are always a bad thing, but I do still love in this situation, in this situation where clearly there should not be a gun. You know, they, they got to a place, I don't know how far they went, but evidently, you know, none of the neo-Nazis find them. And he stays there for a while as he tells this entire story about, you know, his time in prison. So, yeah, you know... But he doesn't, like, holster the gun or anything, no, no, he takes the clip out, throw that, you know, throws that in, and, you know, just picks this thing apart briefly and throws it in several different, like, garbage cans or something. So even if somebody showed up and found at least one of those parts, it would take them a little bit to find all three parts and then combine them. So, you know, nobody's sh shooting anyone with that gun anytime soon is basically the the result there and I know that it's not supposed to be a funny scene it's not a joke but when Danny like grabs him and shoves him into that very noisy you know what is it like a what do you call it? like a I guess it's like a garage door kind of thing I don't know it just makes me laugh I think it's because it's so noisy and because he keeps pushing it. If you had shown me just that scene and you didn't tell me what the whole movie was about, I might think that it was a comedy because it's so well-timed, 
you know, he runs up and shoves him into it, and Derek's like, okay, okay, and shoves him in again, shoves him in again, and, and then, you know, a few seconds pass, and we're like, okay, he's done, it's, it's, he's over, nope, shoves him in again, and just cracks me up every single time, I, you know, I really try, but I just, I, yeah, it, you know, cracks me up every time. Now, the, I like Danny's girlfriend, I, I think it's her in both scenes, but yeah, you know, Lizzie, I, I like how Derek, you know, is on his way into Cameron, and, you know, several people recognize Derek, you know, there, and, you know, yeah, the first several of them, he's like, oh, crap, I really don't want to deal with these people, you know, the, you know, those two fast-talking kind of, them two could, could easily be in, like, a comedy, but, you know, yeah, the, yeah, they're, they're like, you're Danny's brother, right, he's, you know, you're, you're, you know, like, a legend around here, you know, and, yeah, he, he really hates, it. again, you know, it's right up in his face, what he has done, what, you know, yeah, what he has done to the world, and, by the time this girl, Lizzie, asks him, I'm not sure why he doesn't just say, nope, and, you know, must be thinking, you must be thinking of someone else. But he's like, he's just, yeah, sh sure, you're another person. Oh, great, another female neo-Nazi. Or maybe you're just here because you think some of these guys are hot and you don't mind that the, you know, that, that they're so disrupt. She's like the only other female, you know, other than Stacy, I think. I, you know, might have been some in those crowd scenes, but yeah. And he goes, you know, and, and yeah, he says, yeah, I am, you know, could you tell him that Lizzie is looking for him? And he, you know, Lizzie, okay, sure. And he goes in there and, you know, Danny's there and it's like, you know, you, you go ahead, go out. There's a cute girl named Lizzie, she's looking for it, you know, and yeah, that's, that's a good, and then, you know, they're making out, and then the day after they meet up again, I don't know if he's told her yet that he's no longer a neo-Nazi, you know, maybe she wasn't that much, maybe she wasn't about the hatred, maybe she was about the person, and she just happened to end up, you know, maybe she followed him there, and, you know, maybe she thought she could fix him, and not in the dog way, I don't know exactly, but, you know, with, she's barely in the movie, but there's still this, you know, when we see her cry after it's, you know, it's been realized that Danny was shot, it still has an impact, you know, it's, yeah, very, very compelling, very nicely done. Now, the... I like the, I, I think the, when the, you know, all the guys gradually leave the shower, it's really effective, really builds tension, you know, you can really, yeah, something's gonna happen here, and you even see the guard, you know, after they've all gone in, the guard, you know, closes the door, you know, you know, he's, he's not gonna stop it, you know, he, yeah, you know, what, He's gonna protect this one white guy from all these other, you know, yeah, just not not necessary. And I I like how Danny at first he's clearly scared by Derek, scared of Derek even when he, when Derek, you know, even when Derek's just yelling at the others at the table, you know, when when they're eating together, he's he's not on board. And when the gun comes out, even Stacy at that point is like, this, you know, this has gone out of control, you know. And then again, there at the end, when we see, you know, she's still really into it. Even if the gun hadn't, if the gun hadn't, you know, been, you know, been pulled out, I'm not sure exactly how he would have gotten away. They were all around him. There was a huge crowd and they were all looking for blood, you know, so, yeah, if, even if they don't, like, beat him to death, he's gonna be messed up, 
in that situation. But but yeah. So Danny goes from being scared of him to actually worshiping him when he's gone. And it's kind of like, you know, it's it's the importance of the the same gender role model, you know, in this case the male role model. And the, you know, the movie also has some really compelling, I mean, both the, you know, Davina and maybe Doris is the name, the, the mother, both of them are very strong female characters, although we do see that Doris is a little too lenient, maybe, you know, Gould points out, you know, you don't, you're not seeing the children, the, the children of the world that's living in, so, and, you know, yeah, Davina, Davina should maybe have called the cops instead of getting out bat, but you understand why. It's, yeah, the, everyone in the family has a temper, basically. Now, but, but yeah, the same way that Derek got especially furious once his dad was gone. And it does, you know, it, I think there's at least one online critic who, you know, or critic whose review was also online, who said that the movie ends up seeming like the 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 way to become a new you know like neo Nazism is something you embrace because you you know you've lost a, you know your your father or your older brother the you know the the male caretaker of the family and that is of course oversimplified but I do still think I don't know maybe the film does end up saying that if so I don't agree with it but you know with with that with the movie if it's saying that but it, it there there is this very clear you know they've lost something they they need something and hatred fills that hole now i like how you know i do quite like the 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 funny black friend in in prison you know guy tory i think is you know the the gradual you know the way he breaks down Derek's defenses you know at first it's like you know what I don't even care you don't want to talk to me whatever and you know when when he sees him like angry you know from you know what you're gonna get yourself a heart attack you know you think it's gonna be done they're just gonna wheel more in and you know what you're gonna end up getting your giving yourself a heart attack and I don't even care but you're gonna give me a heart attack too you know, and they, you know, they get to talking the, the, you know, the Ku Klux Klan thing, and, the, you know, I don't hate those sheets. These are the sheets that I hate, and you know, okay, sure, you don't like me, but at least I'm not the one getting angry at the sheets. <laughs> yeah, dude's got a point, and you know, he, you know, the the talk about the the, you know you know, angry sex, you know, makeup sex, and, you know, yeah, that whole thing, yeah, that is really funny and charming, it's, you know, and, and he's definitely right, you know, you do not want to leave a, you know, <laughs> you don't want to leave them in an argument, in, in that kind of situation, so, yeah, I am not speaking from experience, but it makes a lot of sense, and the, you know, when, as you, you know, they, they start bonding over, I think it's baseball, I'm, you know, I'm not an American, so I'm not into baseball, and, yeah, you know, gradually they, they get so into it, they forget, you know, they, they're just focusing on talking, they, you know, they stop really focusing on words, and I, I lost count, yeah, sure, it's enough, you know, that, that whole thing, now, and, you know, after, after the rape, and, you know, and this is also after he's been talking a lot with the the black friend, you know. And and Sweeney comes in and he's like, "It's just it's very, I'm I'm confused, you know, because suddenly the neo Nazis aren't sticking to their the these principles, which is that's the point. If you don't stick to the principles, then you're just as bad as these other ethnicities." you know, or, or approaching that level of being bad. And now there's this black guy who's cool, you know, and, and he plays basket with them and 
yeah, you know, it's cool. It's cool, I'd say. Yeah, he's he's confused, and you know, Sweeney, you know, my my help is not without was it you know is not unconditional. It just gotta love Avery Brooks. You know, and and he starts sending him these books, and it's again, you know, there's someone I can reach here, and he also he already knew Derek, and when this happens, he you know he realizes this, you know. <laughs> it actually, you know, if it wasn't a cause that I agreed with, I might really hate that he does that because him coming in like that, you know. I'll help you as long as you see things my way, as long as you come to my, you know, but, yeah. Touché to, to those who make that point. And, you know, yeah, I, where the movie does kind of suggest that Danny, you know, through the essay, through the essay that we hear, you know, once, once he stops just typing, analyze and interpret anal sex and, you know, after that, he's he gets it, you know, and I really love the line that he, you know, writes, if I had testified, it would have been life, you know, and, but yeah, through the essay, we realize that he's completely changing his mind, even though it took him three years, you know, he spent three years getting there and 24 hours to undo it. Derek spends about two years, you know, it's, he says, it had, I'd been there for a year when this when things started getting weird or something like that. So he spends about two years, you know, deconverting, going, you know, going away from being a neo-Nazi, and that is much more credible. And in jail, someone can really change how they think, especially with all that spare time, all these books, and yeah, some. Sadly, there is still, you know, there's recidivism is still an issue, but yeah, you know, some people can really change who they are in there. And in closing, I love the acting in, I think it's in slow mo, it might even be in extreme slow mo, as he realized, you know, at first, you know, he curb stomps him and the cops come in. And Danny is looking directly at him, and Derek is looking directly at Danny, and, you know, at first, okay, you know, and puts the, you know, um, you know, put my hands on my head, uh, you know, yeah, you can never go too many references, yeah, so, so it's, yeah, he, he's getting ready to be arrested, and he's basically, he's, he's accepting that, you know, he's like, I just killed me some, you know, and, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, he's, he's, he gradually realizes, you know, and like he says later, I killed two kids, and it didn't make me feel any better. You know, it didn't solve anything. It's, you know, it's like it's like Sweeney says to him. You know, you gotta ask the right questions. Has anything you've ever done made your life better? And you know, there the you know he realizes I just I ruined everything. This is you know I'm I'm going to prison. And what you know what did I just do? And yeah, just amazing acting. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.